All right, today we're working on our COVID mask, making sure that uh, we have three layers. The filter, which is the white layer that I mailed to you and or you picked up. It is a dot layer similar to our interfacing, but it has no glue on it. So see this very fine dot layer and that is a filter. It's the same filter that what's the, considered the best filter as in you know, a vacuum cleaner, uh, a mask that would be on N95. We ordered this especially in the spring. Actually, I bought 10 yards of it. And a friend of mine actually ordered 50 yards. So I got 10 yards off of him. One outer layer of fabric. I'm using a print so I can tell the inner layer from the outer layer. And then one lining layer so that I can tell what is supposed to be against my face. Now, these two layers may be the same. The mask that I'm wearing now is the same. Here's my outer layer and my inner layer. And you can see how much it has faded from sun and wear. Let me just remove this for a second. I have it quite tight on my neck. So that is a very important piece. And then what we'll do, the reason why I think a lining layer is important, I have to untie these and it's taking me a while, okay. The reason why I feel like an inner layer is important is because then when you are outside and you're breathing in, you don't touch. You don't wanna to touch the outside of your mask. That's the part that is preventing you from getting ill. And you can see that the inside of my mask is now bright, but I had two little darts so I could tell the right from wrong. And you can see how much, or maybe you can't, but it is significantly faded on the right side from the inside. So whatever you have, it will change color. Um, and red, by the way, and this will be, Carl will be happy to hear this, is the most fugitive of all colors. So it goes away the fastest. I have a, a question, Pam. Yes. Um, I'm about to cut my fabric. Right. But because I have the stripes, does it matter which way I go? So interesting, that's a very good question. Did you get a piece of salvage on your fabric piece? The, um, you want to screen share and hold it up? Yeah, because it looks like hold on. the sides were nicely finished for me. Okay. Um, okay. So this side, hold on. let me get you bigger so I can really see. Oh yeah, that's a that is a that's an overlock edge, right? Right. So there's two sides of the overlock, and then I don't. This piece is oh, well, this right up to your camera. This piece is like folded and sewn on and the corner. And hold the back side of no the same. Go like this. Hold your edge, and then show me the back of your edge. Right up to your camera. Okay, and then the other side. Okay, that's your selvage. Okay. So, here's what I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna suggest. Um, just a second. I have a student trying to find me. Did you guys, sorry, did you guys get into um, the meeting from the email or from a link? No, I got in the email. I was waiting in our Zoom link that is on the left-hand side and it didn't work. And then you sent that email and I closed it and I got through through the email. Okay, so I just, <laughs> somebody, I just- I, I ended up getting in through the link. Okay. Oh, it ended up connecting. So interestingly, what happens is when I talk to IT, sorry for this, uh, this interruption, but when I talk to IT, one guy actually said, I think it's best if you, the instructor always signs in on their site at zoom.us and that that is the most secure and it gives us a mo more direct route. And that is the same. So what I did is I signed in on that site today 
I sent the email to everyone, which is what I had done all spring. And I think I'm going to continue that practice. And yet still it's this exact same address as the um, Canvas page. So it's any way you can get in. It's just not a perfect system. All right. Let's talk about how do you find the straight of grain lengthwise and crosswise based on your fabric, okay? So based on your fabric, we want first, in order to cut, we wanna make sure that our fabric is on the straight of grain. So I'm gonna pull out my piece. I can tell this is a salvage. This is really clear, right? And yours, Cara, is not that clear because it's blended to your piece. So, but the lengthwise grain, if what I said, not the overlock part, but the other one is the lengthwise grain. When you pull on it, there's no stretch, none, right? When you pull on the overlock side, this is my crosswise, I can get a little tiny bit of stretch, see this? Oh. And so this tiny bit of stretch tells me that's the cross grain. So you, because we're doing a small piece, you can choose whether you put your stripes going this way and show me your piece again. And your, your top edge is your lengthwise or your crosswise. So how do the stripes go? This way, lengthwise or crosswise? So this is that's crosswise, yeah that's mm -hmm. right because there's just a little pull. Mm -hmm. So then my stripes go up and down. Right. Okay. That's that is what I would expect. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you something about your mask, and this might make a difference. Lengthwise grain is going to fall along the face. Crosswise grain is going to be a little bit further away. So when you make a garment and you want it to fall along the body, like we did on our mannequin last time, the lengthwise grain goes up and down the mannequin. But if you're making a dirndl skirt and you want it to go away from the body, you do it on the cross grain and it has a little more poof. So if you put your lengthwise grain going, uh, or you have your stripes horizontal, when you do your pleating, your mask might rest just a little bit further away from your face, which might be more comfortable. And I think you have enough fabric, you could probably do one each way. <laughs> right? That's what I would, that was my next question is like, so we want to be mindful of the rest of the fabric. So then it's okay to, to cut it as close to the edges. That's okay. correct. That's correct. You remember that I cut my, uh, I cut my salvage off. So when I'm looking at my real piece of fabric here, my garment fabric, I'm gonna unpin so we can look at these three layers. Just gonna pull them this way. Oh, do I hear Jasper? So I have my fabric with no salvage and you should be able to pull your thread down and have it be straight, right? So it's on the straight of the grain. Either way, whether it's lengthwise or crosswise, you should be able to do that because we're working with a woven, which is at 90 degree angle. Then on the, on the matching this to my lining, I put the, the front side of my outer layer to my lining layer. Okay. And then so I can see my easy right side from wrong side because we're gonna make this into a, a pocket. I'm going to put my filter layer on top of my lining. Okay. And this filter layer is the size we need to cut. The That's nine correct. Okay. That's your pattern. So that was the easiest way. I didn't, you didn't need to download the pattern from the yeah. internet. You could just use your filter layer as your pattern. Just make sure that you're cutting it on the grain. And so now I am putting my corners together. Smenson, uh, we're having an actual lab. So you should be cutting your fabric as we're talking. Do you have fabric? Smenson? 
Smenson, did you get fabric when you were up here the other day? Sorry, what was that? Do you have fabric so you can work on your uh, mask? Yeah, we do. Okay. And you prepared it for me last time. Okay, so you want it to be in this layer. So mm -hmm. it's your, your filter layer, your outer layer and your lining layer. Three layers. And then I'm pinning. And I thought as a crack up in the in the uh, New York Times, they really gave you a lot of options. You can use paper clips, you can use bobby pins, safety pins. And I will say I have used all of those at different times. I've even taped it together. So I've even taped it so that it could be um, just held in place temporarily. Pins are just to hold it in place temporarily. Okay, so we're in real time cutting and getting our three layers together. And I'm just gonna reorder this so that I indicate that that the layers from the top are the filter layer, then the lining layer. and then the outer layer. So Miranda, do you have your little, your, uh, your COVID piece that I sent you here? And that's what we're cutting real time. So let's get it to this. And I actually have a, um, you can use anything you want for lining. I happen to be using a piece of muslin but you can use um, something else. I actually made a mask of denim for my son and he really liked it and it was felt good on his face. So it was very masculine and it was a you know firm piece. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to do that. I'm just gonna go get my scissors right here. I want to, I'm going to do a couple of masks while I demo so that you can see it's each step numerous times. So I'm going to, right now what I'm doing, I'll put this down just a second. When I stand, I have it on these platforms, but to see the cutting, I'll, I'll just put it down for you. So I'm going to make this edge straight. This is my prepared piece, so I'm putting it here. I'm gonna cut my salvage off both pieces and tear it. Because that way I know I have a straight edge. This is a straight edge because it has been torn. This I can see is almost a straight edge. I just need to have like three threads come off of right here. And then to make sure that it is straight. So I just took a tiny smidgen off. Then I will unravel, I can unravel a thread and make sure it goes all the way across. Right? There you go. Okay. And this side I can see is not straight. It's really going off at an angle this way. If you, if I square this up to the camera, you can see it's going off at an angle. And I can follow a thread with the point of my scissor and see that how it's going off. It's about six threads down here. So I'm going to go to the iron and glue these together. I'll be right back. Ironing can really put these two layers together. So I like that. It's tough to 
tear a very small increment like this, which is less than a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to see how it will unravel and then see if I'm good. Oh yeah, so that's good. So there's my piece. All I need to do is add my filter to that. And I have a question about the filter. Yes. I'm just looking at it um, and it, it has two sides that are different. Uh, each side is a little different, right? Uh-huh. So do you think it matters no. which side is facing out? It doesn't matter which side is facing out because it's sandwiched in between. Mm -hmm. And you can, it, either way, you have protection. Okay. So it doesn't matter which way it goes. The, the important thing is that it's in between those two layers. Got it. Okay. So I'm now going to cut another piece of filter so that I have two masks that I can get into. This is where you want to be. Put your pins at with the heads away from the corner. And then we're going to leave this for a moment because we'll have to go to our ties or elastic. And I'm going to suggest ties for this, which will be. Um, Pam, I have to go actually uh, unpack the box that has the rest of my sewing stuff. So I'm just, just letting you know, I'll be back in about five minutes. That's fine. Thank you for letting me know. So we'll be making these ties. This is, this is hand stitched. And you can see that um, I wore it for painting. <laughs> and that's my back stitch, right? Here's the back side of my back stitch. So the ties are really a tricky part. And I just, I want us to really be careful. On the website, it says to make them 18 by three quarters, and that is too narrow, okay? So we're gonna cut four ties. If you have a 20 inch piece of fabric, and this is six and a half by nine and a half, roughly, I'm making this one a little shallower. It's for my daughter. I made her several, but I had to make them narrower because she's very narrow face. So this is our first, this is the mask portion. Now we're gonna make the ties. And I want you to cut them one and a half inches wide. And I think we can go as small as 15. And let me just measure mine for a moment because mine are too long. I just let mine be as long as the fabric was. So mine are 19. And I'm gonna put a pin so I can just test this. Let me get a safety pin. And I think actually maybe it does say 15. And this is where you want to use a ruler to just draw. What I would draw is a three inch piece. So I would cut two, three inches by 15. Then I would fold in half. fold in half to equal one and a half by 15. And then I would cut on the fold. It, it is a little bit easier to do that. Let me just move this a little bit. So I would just cut on the fold for that. Okay, I'm gonna pin this and I'll let you know how that goes. And I'll tie it on. I prefer the ties because I can leave my top tie tied and pull it over my head. And the bottom one, then I can just tie quickly. But I leave it in my car. I hang it over my whatever, steering wheel or something like that. And then I can just slide it over my head and I'll show you how that works. Because there's a little bit of stretch and especially if you did cut it on the cross grain, you'd have a bit of stretch, just a, just a smidge. Are you doing the binding for that as well? You could use bias binding for that if you wanted. 
Sure. No, I meant the liner that oh, you. No, 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 no lining. Just the only one piece of the outer layer. Good question. We're cutting four pieces only. Let me move this over. Sorry. Four only of the outer layer. I'll put that on there as well. And then I'll demo how to do it. I'm just going to test this. Um, I'm going to test this method. Let's see. I put it over my ears and then tie. Oh, yeah. And then I can take this off and on. Put it under my hair and then just tie this when I'm going into the store. So as I've tied it, you know, that has left me with an additional four or five inches. So if you're concerned, I, I just wanted to see if, what it would be like if I just left mine long. Now let's cut a piece of a tie. I need to find something that's long enough. If you have a bandana, it's 20 by 20. So that's why I left mine at 20. It's very easy because you'll have plenty of material. Here's my piece. Wally, did you find lining? Oh, great. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wally's making one that has uh, musical notes on it. And I want you to see how well we're social distancing. Hi, Wally. Hello. <laughs> that was Kara. Okay, so I'm getting my piece of fabric right here. I will measure my three inches. If you're just working with a ruler, and when I did this in the spring working from home, all I had was this ruler. So you can work with anything and just measure it and mark. Remember, I like graphite. You can use an arc pencil. Okay, Pam, just, just for a laugh, because I'm having trouble finding stuff since I just moved, but I want to show you what I just found. I have it on my keychain that I'm going to use to measure. Okay, let's see. Well, you have to turn your camera on. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, let me pin you. You're measuring with? This is this little me measuring thing that I, I got from my key. Oh, yeah. It's been on my keychain for, for years, and I'm actually going to use it now. So... Here's another piece thing that you can use to measure with. Thank you for sharing that. That's really important. If you don't have a ruler, you can use an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Oh. And I actually did this. I was buy, I needed to buy something for a drawer. So I did this at um, dollar store. They have a great dollar store and this is 11 inches. Okay. So half of this is four is four and a quarter. So if I measure this plus a little more than half, I'll have my 15. 11 plus four and a quarter would be 15 and a half, right? So I'll show you how I'll do that. And then for three inches, which is what we're talking here, I'm just gonna fold this in thirds. Okay, so where did the three inches come from? Each strap needs to be three inches because oh, we're no. going to. Uh, back to this. They need to be one and a half. If we cut two pieces at three inches and then fold it in half, iron it, then we can cut along the fold or tear that, and then we end up with our four pieces. Got it. Sorry. It's a little bit, you know, one of the things that I am doing is I'm teaching you a little bit of manufacturing trick so that you will have a faster way to do something in the future. So I'll show you. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the paper measurement. 
we'll see how accurate I am. So here is my piece of fabric. I've marked my three inches. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with my paper first. So I folded it in half so that I have I know where my four and a half is. I have an 11 inch piece of paper and you see it's definitely recycled both sides. So here's an 11. Oh, you know what? I need to iron this. Let me just iron, 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 please. It's very, very important. It's just more cooperative. I'll bring you with me. So I, it's just a little bit wrinkly because I put it in my bin and it wasn't as straight as I'd like. So I'm going to iron this flat and then you can see that I have one thread that comes off the top here. So I know I'm on my straight. That's my cross grain. I'm gonna use that for my strap. It gives me a little tiny bit of stretch. Here's my piece of paper. I've used a piece of paper many a time. There's my 11. Here's my four and a half. So I'm gonna just inch it back just a tiny bit. And honestly, for the ties, 15 and a half is fine. So there it is. And I'm gonna do my thirds. and mark, and mark. And I'm using this purple pencil and see here's my third right there that I had marked my three inches. So now I'll measure and I'll let you know how I do. That's 12. Right there, plus three, so I'm at my 15. So a piece of paper, a ruler, if you uh, need more help than that, I can sure, I'm sure I can find something that will help you uh, measure. If you need to draw a straight line, a paper has a straight corner. So line your paper up on your um, cross grain and I'm gonna draw along that line here for my straight edge. Okay, so if I don't have my ruler, I can still make my straight edge there and I think you can see that line right here, okay? And then I'll draw my next line across the bottom. And again, I've made several three inch marks, so I'm just gonna join them together. I could do this with my paper or with my ruler. And I'm gonna do this twice. And this is because they said three quarters of an inch. And when I tried to fold that last time, I was not one happy camper. I'm gonna do another thing where I will fold this on my three inch line and I'll cut these two at once. Just a little tiny bit of time saving. So I'm sorry, Pam, we're, are we cutting four strips that are three by 15 each? We're cutting two. Two, all right. Two strips. So this is my... This is my cheat to get my two. I'm gonna cut this one at three inches right here. And then I'm going to cut this one at three inches. I'm so excited to have some new masks, you guys. It's like, especially now we're in a much more restrictive environment. You know, Goswami, our president, our superintendent president of Santa Barbara City College canceled all the in-person PE classes. They're all online. The only classes that are meeting on in person are the ones that absolutely cannot be met, like marine diving, um, nursing, and auto mechanics. So because I folded it, see this nice crease I have? I can cut along here for my two pieces by three. I'll do this again so everyone can get caught up. 
because I realize I'm maybe moving more quickly than you. And then this is what I said. Now I have two three inch by 15. Fold this in half and then I can cut that right down that edge or I can tear it. Because this is wide enough to tear. And more manageable. I could have torn the six inch piece in half too. That would have been smart, Pam. Okay, so now I have my one and a half by one and a half. I'm just gonna clip it on my seam, my fold. I'll clip this one and then this time I'll tear them. And then I know I have straight of grain. Done, 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 hooray. And now I just iron. This is where an iron is super helpful, super, super helpful. These little skinny things, you just wanna pull your hair out if you don't have an iron. So you have four pieces now, one and a half by 15. And I'm gonna just iron these flat. Then I'm gonna show one piece and I'll then I'll write the instructions on the board and then I'll leave you to be able to double check with the board so that you can do your own four pieces. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm gonna demo one, how to get it the right size. Then I'll write it on the board and then I'll keep the zoom on the board so that you can see the instructions. So I'm gonna set aside my three and work with one. We will repeat this process on each strap. Our goal is to get a finished edge so that we have a piece that does not ravel. Again, I'm gonna fold this in half. And this is, we're making it look like bias tape. And actually, if you had bias tape, you could do that. Remember on our, on the website, it says you can do a shoelace, which I used yesterday to tie my pants up. But you can do a shoelace, you can do bias tape, or if you wanted to do elastics, you could do that. And I'll show you the elastic method as well. I fold it in half so that I have a point at which I can fold in each side. Now, you remember on Monday, I was working with a piece that was like minute. And I just, that's just ridiculous. You don't need to do that. I don't know who could work that way, honestly. Three quarters of an inch divided in four, you're working with like, I don't know, uh, less than three sixteenths of an inch. Yowza. That's smaller than a quarter. So this is about a quarter of an inch. I'm doing this so that I get my finished edge. So see, now I have my center. I have my finished edge. I'm going to turn it over, fold my next side to the center. This is where it looks like bias tape, but really we're making straight tape, aren't we? Bias tape, remember, has a really great stretch because the straighter grain is going at 45. One thing about working with 100% cotton is that the ironing of it is very easy. So I had a woman tell me on Monday night at a meeting that I was at, I just wanna talk about the effectiveness of masks. Her son tested positive for COVID. He had to come home and her husband picked him up. They traveled in the car from Orange County up to Santa Barbara with the windows open and wearing just the surgical masks and got him home quarantined in his room. He was COVID positive and no one else in the family became COVID positive after that because he was diligent about wearing a mask. I mean, that's incredible. So I'm very excited about the mask. Here we are. There's our two pieces folded into the center. And then once again, I have some memory because I folded it to the center already. 
And I'll just fold this to the center again. So now this looks like a one of my ties. Okay. Now I'll do the directions on the board so that as we go through, I want everyone to make their four ties. And as we go through, please uh, work with the instructions, okay? Because I'll also be making mine. So we have our four ties cut. And this is the, this is the folding process. for the ties. Four, one and a half inch by 15 inch strips. Repeat for all ties. I'm gonna put that at the bottom actually. for each tie. Fold in half lengthwise. Okay, does that make sense? Fold long raw edges to center crease. This board is making a lot of noise. I don't have to do that. So I have my ties like this. And I'm going to fold this one up to here. So then I have a spot. Let me just put this even. So I folded this up. And this is a folded edge. And then the raw edge is at the crease. Wow, that's some kind of crazy calligraphy writing. Raw edge. Okay, S makes sense so far? Let me just do a one in a circle. So fold both long edges to the crease, okay? Repeat for, for a second side. And then fold in half back on the crease. on original crease. All right, that way you have two folded edges. You have two folded edges. You have them folded to the inside and you have your other fold on the, all long sides are folded. Is that making sense for everyone? Okay. Uh, not, not yet. <laughs> okay, let me put while, I'm gonna show you here while we have our instructions, okay? Okay. Just let me prepare it for a second, Tara, so that I can do a step-by-step. -step.
Okay. So step number one for each tie, you want to fold in half lengthwise. So here's my one and a half. And I'm folding that in half. There's my one and a half, pretty good measurement. And I'm folding that in half lengthwise and ironing this. Okay, then it becomes half that size. Then I take my long raw edges to the center crease and fold it. So I will take my long raw edge and fold this to the center crease, okay? Step number one, fold the piece in half, long ways and fold it up. Then take my long raw edge and fold it to the center of my crease. And then I repeat on the second raw edge like this and fold it just to my crease. The third, fold in half on the original crease. So once I get it to this point and it's ironed, then I fold it in half on the original crease and I end up with my original fold where it was in half and both of my fold lines right here. Okay, does that make sense? Better sense now? Shall I tape these up here? Yeah. Okay, let me get some tape that I can do that with. And I'll move this closer to you if you, are you seeing the screen okay? All yes. right, okay. I'm gonna just put my one up here. So here's my strip. So you should have four of these. Okay. And then I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise. Pam, do you have an industrial um, iron at home? No. I feel like once you go industrial, you don't want to go back. Oh, <laughs> it is such Thank a pleasure. I hope you can come here, Cara, and, and experience a shop. It is such a pleasure to work here, to have a high cutting table, to have an industrial iron, to have a smooth board that you can iron on. I mean, for yeah. decades, and when I first worked in my very first costume shop when I was 18, I had a um, cardboard unfoldable, a foldable. I'm wondering if I have one over here right now. I just, I just used one to move a mirror. I put it in between, but I had a cardboard piece that I put on the floor. I put my fabric on the floor and the cardboard's about this thick. And then I could either tape or pin my fabric. I'd pin it very carefully to it. And I worked on my hands and knees, yeah. So fold it in half lengthwise like this, right? And iron that. Fold the long edges up. So we're gonna get this one up here. 
Yeah, it's a, it is a pleasure, but there are some in home irons that are better than others. And you can, uh, I'll, I'll look at what my good one is at home. I can't remember, but I remember, I remember being so impressed. I went to my stepmom's house and she had one. I was like, Oh, Joycey, we call her our bonus mom. I said, Joycey, you have like the greatest home iron ever. So I have it folded in half lengthwise. I'm folding one, the long edge up to my crease like this. And then I can fold my other one down. And then I fold it in half along the original crease. And I'll move that up as soon as I get out of the way so you can see those pieces more carefully. So that my end piece is my two long edges folded in and then folded together on this original fold line right here. So I'll fold this one, I'll show this. And then the other side, I'll show it open unless that's confusing. So let's see if I can maybe, maybe make it just a little bit lower for you guys. And is that, can you see that well enough? One strip folded in half, folded up and then folded together. I think I better put this together. And we're going to take time and do this right now. So do it, ask questions. I'm actually going to get a couple pins to hold them in place. I have my sample student across 30 plus feet away working at a completely separate ironing area. So he's doing this exactly. He's never done it before. He's not an experienced sewer. He's going to do it. So I'm just showing you, here's this edge folded up. So ask any questions. Are we going to have to hand sew these ties or can we run them through the machine? We're going to machine them. I'm going to show you how to do them all in a row. If we can get our ties done today, we're in great shape. So that's the that's the bottom one. That's why we cut them wider. I mean, I can't even imagine if we had three quarters of an inch, which is half of this. Not possible. I mean, I must have made it like this, but it was like insane. So I would definitely not do that again. Um, so there you go. Again, 15 inches, it could be 16 inches, it could be 18 inches. I made mine the full width of the, of the um, bandana because that's what I had and it was just easy. So you can do that. Catherine, what are you using for your fabric? We saw Kara's stripe. Okay. Oh, sorry, I, I was just talking and then I realized I was actually on mute, so you didn't hear anything I said. Um, here's the fabric. Oh, let me uh, zoom in so that we can see what it is. Oh, that's it's got a, a sort of very light, almost paisley. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty. It looks really pink in the video. It's actually more of a, um, like a rose color. Well, it's sort of going with your shirt. You know it is. It actually is. So. We will just assume it has been planned that way. You know, it's probably subconscious planning, I'm okay. sure. Does anybody uh, else want to show their fabric? I love to see what choices you have. Uh, really, the one I made for my son was gray denim. He loved it. It was, you know, it's like when you're working with men, you want to make something that's masculine. And, you know, black is so uh, whatever default. And I feel like it's more important to make something interesting. So I'm going to leave this up so that I can step behind and prepare my other four pieces for my second mask while you're preparing. We'll take, how are you guys doing? Are you done with your first strip yet? 
I was going to say we can take 20 minutes and do this. And okay. then at, at 1040, I will show how to sew them together. So if you get done early, why don't we return at 1040? How does that sound? That's good. Um, is there a trick when you fold? OK, so I've let got my. Where, let me see where you're at, Cara. <laughs> Okay, hold on. So I, I'm starting to fold one into the center fold. Right. Okay, is there a trick to ironing it without ironing your fingers? So uh, first of all, pull out <laughs> those strings okay. so that you don't have any extra stuff hanging around. Yeah. Okay. And then you're gonna lay it flat. And you know one okay. thing that you can do, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a trick right now. I mean, I guess that's part of the fine little detail that I just. Or you know what I'm doing so I don't burn my fingers is so I'm like ironing, like, you know, one fold and then setting it aside and then going to the next one. And then when I go back, then it's cooled off. So then I can finish if that makes sense. Oh, so like a little inch at a time. Just sort of like, you know, doing, uh, I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but like doing ironing the fold and then setting that piece off to the side and then doing the other piece, letting uh, it cool off. Yeah. It's like trying Rather to than do, do the that. whole piece, do all the folds on one piece at the same time. Got it. So I'm gonna show you a trick that I use. Just a second, I have to cut my next piece to do it. Wally, are you ready to go? Woo! Star student, Wallace is done. I was going to say, Wally's a teacher's pet. Yeah. He got no special dispensation, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. So Cara, here's one thing that will help you is more moisture. And I'm gonna show you a way to do moisture. Oh. So this is a six inch piece. Uh -huh. And this is called sprinkle. My mom used to do this for ironing and it just helps moisture. So I have a just a piece of water. I'm sticking my finger in, I'm gonna flick water at it, okay? So this is just flick. If you have a spray bottle, like I'm sure you do for set, you can yeah. do that. So then this will absorb moisture through the whole thing, right? Because it's cotton. I'm gonna then right. cut this in half for my three inch. And it becomes far more cooperative. Yeah. And I'm just gonna tear like, so now I have my six inch into three, and then I have my three into one and a half. And then I'll go back over to the iron and I'll show you. The way. I do keep the point there. I keep my hand apart. And I think part of it is getting over that little bit of fear that the iron's getting too close. But, you know, I come from a family of fearless. My sister's son said when he was a kid, really young, like four, she said, don't put your finger in the in the slot, you know, never put anything metal in here into the electrical outlet. Of course, he decided, well, I want to see what happens. And he did it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you know, learn by trial. So the two sides aren't supposed to overlap. They're supposed to meet at the center fold. Correct. So here I am. I'm ready to do my piece now that I've moistened it. And I'm here at the iron yet again, my four pieces. 
ironing it flat. And if you iron it flat, that the great thing about ironing it flat is it also puts moisture in and it gives you nice edges to work with. Constantly tending those little strays, just like hair. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I, you can iron all four of them in half, like Catherine said, I think that's what you were implying, right, Catherine? Yes. So that you iron all four and get them this way and set them aside. Uno. Okay, I'll do my next one. Tend all those little strays because they start confusing the issue. Now I'm already pressing by holding my finger apart down here. Yeah, you know, I have my fingers spread apart so that I'm ready to press. I can feel the stretch in this as I'm pressing, it's cool. Wally, were you able to see your lengthwise and crosswise grain and feel the stretch when you ironed? Uh huh. So I'm going to get those out of the way. Great. Fold it in half. I don't, some of these fabrics, I just have to wonder, this has flowers and the moon and cherries. <laughs> it's like, this is, this is a calico. It's just a printed muslin that is. Calicos always tend to have weird, or they did back in the day. Well, I think, you know, prairie dresses, it was, first of all, they were worn and worn and worn, so they would just fade. But any sort of kind of cheery thing, and you didn't get a lot of choices. So you just maybe went for the background color. All right, so now I have all four folded in half. Good. Get rid of all these unnecessary strays. Okay. And then I will open this up and I have a nice good crease. My first one is really creased because it's cool. So I can open it up, I can really see it. And you exactly correct, you're not overlapping you are putting the raw edge to that center crease. And you have a little bit of flexibility because if you have a torn edge, you kind of have a little bit of a fringe and you can leave that. I'll move it up closer to you guys so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna put this right to the center. And again, I'm pressing it already with my finger. And then I'm taking the point of my iron, too close. And you can actually hold fairly far away, like that's six inches away. So that uh, because it's on the straight grain and it will want to pull that direction. So I'm gonna hold the end, even though I've only pressed half of this and I'll put my iron down here. You can see how I can make that fold in. Yeah, once I found my groove, that's kind of what- There happened. you go. Okay, good, getting your groove on. Groove on, crouton. And then you could do the same thing by uh, doing one piece and then doing the other, but I'll do this one together. What did you say? I just, I just sit here thinking there's gotta be an easier way. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I, know. I don't know what it is, though. Yeah, no, I, I just, it's so funny. 
There is, um, we do have a foot that double folds to create bias tape. If you had a fancy machine like that, you could probably do that. And also that's why all those masks that are sold do not have ties. Right. They all are sold with elastic because this is a pain and it, but I think this is more effective and it gives you a better fit. And I just can't stand, I don't know, for some reason, my left ear is always the one that's just like, okay, it is killing me. And if a mask is not comfortable, you're not going to wear it. Right? So is everybody getting their groove on here? I like it. I'll just continue doing my four. Would you rather watch me work or have the instruction sheet? I will post the instruction sheet also. I'll type it up and post it on our web. I'll put it right onto the site. Yeah, I like watching you work. <laughs> okay. I think there's something kind of soothing about it. I was reading about this, um, this French chef who is quite old and he is doing videos for how to make excellent meals out of what you have at home. And I think it was, it was just like a New York Times snippet and it said, I find it so relaxing to watch him cook because he takes such pleasure in it. And it's really with just such simple ingredients that you have at your home and you make exceptional food. And I thought, oh, that's cool. And then there was a picture of something called mustard chicken and I like both mustard and chicken. So I thought, well, maybe I'll look this guy up because my secret is of course I'm a terrible cook so that's what my thing I am a horrible cook but I love watching cooking shows <laughs> oh. so then it's like oh what do I make what do I make what do I make what and if I can actually get an idea I feel like I'm, I'm heroic yeah. so I have my two edges folded in and now I'm going to do my fold back on my original crease And see, I'm working quite a ways from my iron. I'm working six to eight inches away because this is really powerful. So now I'm at the last five inches. I'm gonna fold this in place by pressing that to the center. It wants to go on to that original crease again. And then I can just let it go. And then get a really nice firm crease. You don't want these things to be springy and opening up again. You want them nice and flat. Flat, flat, flat. Did you ever make scrunchies? Back in uh, you the day? know, I never did, but I have had some young friends make them. And uh, I actually had one that came into the shop and she was so excited. She said, oh, can I use this? And she made like five scrunchies. She had really fun, a lot of fun that day. Because I wonder if you could just make it like the same concept, right? Like you just fold it in half, sew it, and then yeah. take a safety pin and put it right side out. That's exactly correct. You just make it bigger. You would use the full three inch piece because a scrunchie usually ends up a little bit wider than this. You know, yeah. so you use a full three inch or, or maybe even four. Inch. If you just sew a tube and then. Yep, exactly right. And the, the wider the tube, the easier it is to manage the ironing and everything. And this is called a casing. So if we were going to make uh, what often I have done in this class is we made pajama pants. And then you do a casing at the top to make a place where your drawstring can go through. And then this is exactly the same technique to make a drawstring. So not a casing, you have a casing and then this drawstring would go through the waistband, you know, kind of like a scrunchie like a scrunchie. Yep. <laughs> but that's a really, you know what, you're really starting to think beyond the project, which is great. You're starting to think about what is a practical application for this? And it's, that's an incredible thing. One other practical application for this particular thing, which is like fold and fold. Remember we did it on our ruffle is this is something that can go around the, the bottom of a garment, you know, 
But even if you have an end of a shirt that's coming apart, you'll know how to manage it by folding it up. So I'm getting caught up with you guys on my second set. How are you guys doing? I'm thinking we'll take a break after we get our four pieces together, because then I'm going to show you how to sew them. And we'll take some time doing that because we'll go to the sewing machine. And I'll also show an alternate hand sewing method. You know, the last time I made, I did this with you, Pam, I think I cut the ties on the straight of grain. So they didn't have any give. And yeah. I think that's why I don't often wear that mask. But uh -huh. this, so this time I cut them on the weft and they're actually like really nice and stretchy. You can tell, can't you? It, this so, is, yeah, it's a really, really makes a difference. I mean, it's subtle difference, but I think it's going to be way more comfortable. Well, over, let's, you know, 15 inches twice is 30 inches and over 30 inches. Let me see how much stretch I'm going to get here. If this is the end of my mark, this is 15. I can get <laughs> a whole inch of stretch. Yeah, I've got at least an inch of stretch on mine. Just for 15. So over 30, you'd get two inches. Mm-hmm. So that's enough to pull it, have it comfortably, not tight around your head, but slightly snug and be able to still pull it off. Okay, so now we should have four beautiful pieces like this, all flat and ironed. And you can continue to iron them flat if they're not flat enough. Like, get down there. Flatten up, you guys. Uh oh, somebody's sewing. Who's sewing? Oh, that's me. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm on a roll. I just want to do them. Okay, I give I said I'd give us three more minutes, but I am going to show you how to sew them continuously so that we'll stitch, we will stitch this end and we'll stitch with our machine all the way down to here and hold this one here in place and continue right on to this one so that we're not doing a start and stop. So ah, that, a new trick. I wouldn't have thought of that. That'll be, that'll just be a new, uh, it'll be a fun thing to do. How can you tie them? No, then you cut them. You cut them apart. Oh, okay. okay. It's just a manufacturing technique to get this strip in place easier. I mean, oh. we could have technically cut a 30 inch strip and then done it and cut it in half and, you know, but that becomes a little bit more complex. So how, do you guys need a break right now? While we have our four like this, we can take a break. You can continue okay. on, but I'm gonna, I will demo again, uh, threading up the sewing machine, stitching these. I'll give you time to do that. And while you're doing that, I will also show a hand stitching method. Okay. So would you like a break or wanna go forge on because we're at an hour and a half in. I think it's time for a break. Agreed. Okay. Cara, thank you. I'm waiting for someone to say that. So yeah. Okay, let's take a break. As much as I want to start sewing them, let's let's take a break. Oh, do you want 15 minutes? We're back at uh, let's be back at 1055 and I'll type it in everything. That'll work. And that way if you don't have your sewing machine set up, you can um, Okay, we will pause the recording. I will sew with contrasting thread so that you can see my stitches more easily, but you might want to sew uh, with blending thread or, I mean, in the case of the red and white, Cara, take your pick. <laughs> or maybe you're gonna just use what we sent. That's completely okay. Yeah, I'm gonna use black, so. Oh, good. It is. <laughs> And if anyone's that close to me that can tell, then they're too close to me and they're not social distancing, so. Good. 
I thought you were going to say because you wear a lot of black, it's a great um, it's a great way to blend it together with what you're wearing. Oh, there you go. It's all on purpose. Yeah. Okay. So I'm setting up my ironing, I mean, my sewing machine, and I have to move a table over so that I can have you guys really close to me. I'm going to use red thread. So here we go. Here's our friend. The sewing machine. Here are my ties. Oh, of course, now I'm on a black table, so they blend in. That's not helpful. The first thing I'm going to do with my machine is make sure that I can turn it on so I'm plugged in. Not plugged in. Okay, that's a good thing to check. Um, you guys probably don't have that situation at home, but it's always good to just go through, go through all the steps every time. It's like when we used to work with computers. Okay, let's see what this is. I'm on my hands and knees again, you know, whatever. Okay. Now my machine is plugged in, so let me just see. Okay, so this machine, the light is not working. So it's, I think you have enough light to see. Now, I'm gonna turn it back off so that I can thread it without you know, accidentally stepping on my pedal or doing anything like that. It's important that your thread and your top thread and bottom, bob, bottom thread are matching. And the easiest way to do that is to wind your bobbin on here from your top thread. Why do we want those matching? We want the thread weight to be the same. The thread weight needs to be the same so that they will match and interlock evenly right here at the width of the fabric. They're gonna interlock right here where we're stitching, okay? So that's why we wanna do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my bobbin in first. This is why we want it off, so I don't accidentally step on it while I'm putting my bobbin in. Lifting out my bobbin casing with the flipper and throwing it at you, right? This is the flipper. This flipper is what you can lift it out on and it locks it in place. So there's my center post. I'm gonna place my bobbin on the center post. Just reviewing because it's been a while since we've done this. I put my bobbin on and depending on, most of us are going to be putting our bobbin in and pulling it through the spring loader so that it unspools in a clockwise fashion, okay? Okay, just a second. I'm going to try and send this girl a, a link. And I'm going to put this in holding my bobbin thread. Do not, if you have a hole here, don't do that. That's just for buttonhole. Holding on to your flipper so it stays in. And then I put it on the post inside my machine and I hear a click. So I'm going to wait. Let me address this. Um, see if I can address this getting an invitation here. Okay. Hmm. Okay, maybe I can just do it this way. Okay, great.
Okay, here we go. And I have my bobbin inserted into my machine. And you can see it's in there. It made that nice click on the top. Put your thread on the spool. And for this machine, I'm going to go over, down through my tension device, a thread guide, up through, and then thread front to back. Remember, we have the long groove side of the needle, and that shows us where we thread. This one's front to back. If your needle's on the left side and your long groove is on the left, you thread left to right, okay? So here we go. Over, down, up, down. Now for some people like Kara, we figured out hers makes a backwards end. Hers doesn't make an end this way. She threads this way. So you know what your machine's gonna do. This last thread guide before it goes down into your long groove side of your needle is very important. And then pinch this half inch and thread front to back through that hole. And this is just like your dinner plate. So I'm gonna to have to move in front of it. If it's, you're at the side, it's very hard to see the hole. And it's when you're in the front and you can actually see the hole, it's much easier to get the thread through. So now I'm pulling it through, making sure that it's completely in line and there's no extra swirl here. Okay. Hold on to your top thread. Engage your wheel, wheel it one time towards you to pick up your bottom thread or the bobbin thread. And you saw that it came around and picked it up. And now I can lift this up. And here is my bobbin thread. I'm gonna go up close so you can see this. Here's my bobbin thread here and here. It's made a loop on the top. And now I pick that up and both my threads are on top. I put that through, there's a little slot in the foot, so I can move that to the back of my stitching area. Have at least six inches of thread, close this lever, making sure that this take up lever is in the full upright position every time you start, okay? Now, if you haven't stitched for a while, take a sample piece of fabric and let's just run a line of stitching. I'm gonna turn my machine on. Everything's gonna be at zero width because I want a straight stitch. I'm ignoring whatever other buttonhole devices I have. I'll be at two and a half. And I'm just gonna uh, check my stitching. There's some extraneous threads here because I demoed a buttonhole on this one. So I'm sewing with red so you'll see it easily. Get used to trying a narrow piece against your presser foot because we're going to stitch on that narrow fold. So I'm going to stitch, I'm going to try and back stitch, I'm going to go forward. Then I'll try and back stitch and I'll go forward. And I'll come to the very end, I'll back stitch two or three times and then I'll go forward. I will lift my take up lever all the way to the top, pull my fabric out several inches and then clip off, leaving my thread tail. And then I can clip my other thread tail. The reason why I do that is I wanna look carefully at my thread. Here's where I stitched. I practice back stitching, stitch, practice back stitching and look at the back side to see are my stitches even and balanced? And that means that they're intersecting right here in between the two layers of fabric because one, both are stitching at exactly the same weight. So they're piercing the fabric equally, okay? So now I'm gonna line up my four pieces. Remember, we are sewing these two fold lines together. So you wanna make sure that you've actually folded them exactly together. If they're not together exactly, like this one's not completely exactly together, then I wanna sew on this side so that I make sure I catch both folds in one stitch. 
And then I can just backstitch here and without stitch, without clipping, I can just continue on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm putting my fabric in. I wanna stitch close to my fold line. I'm gonna sink my needle. Okay, I have my other pieces on my lap and I'll show you if I can show you this. So I have my needle very close to the edge of my fold here. I have it actually in place so that I can hold this thread tail, step on my presser foot and have my, my machine engage this entire edge, okay? And I'll uh, try a little back stitch. If I hold on to this thread tail, I can actually make that back stitch work really easily. So I'm going sewing close to the edge of my fold by looking right through my presser foot. You don't have to pull, your machine will guide your fabric because remember the feed dog pull the fabric through. Now when I get to this part, I can just get my next piece up. Let's see how this works. And I'm gonna back stitch a little at the end because we will finish this edge. And I'm just gonna start another piece right here. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. Never mind. So there's my sample. My stitching line is even on both sides. I've backstitched to secure that. I have it all the way down. And then I backstitched this edge. And I'm gonna clip my threads. This is gonna be the end I'm gonna put into my mask. So then we'll continue that four times. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And if you wanna watch me do one more, I'm gonna do one more right now. And then I'm gonna give you time to work on it because I need to catch up and do, I need to do my four and I need to do the other four because I'm making two masks at the same time. So again, I'm gonna place my folded, double folded edge underneath my presser foot. I have my needle close to the end, back stitch, hold on to these two pieces so it doesn't force my fabric into the hole. The feed dog, pull it through. And I'm just look gradually putting this through. So anytime you feel ready, go ahead and stitch your, your ties. <coughs> and when you get close to the edge, back stitch and put your presser foot all the way, your take up lever all the way to the top, lift your presser foot up, clip close to the edge, take a look at this all the way on the edge, clip your pieces so that you make sure you have both sides connected and then you put that aside, okay? Any questions? Any questions on that? Okay, I'm gonna pause the recording and let's, you know, we can take uh, 10 minutes to do this. I'll check back in with you. I'm just gonna pause the recording. Okay, I feel like Julia Child. Now we have all four of our ties beautifully stitched in place. And we're going to place them into our mask. Here's my mask. I have left it prepared with my three layers. Let me move this down a bit so we can get closer to the table. Okay. Putting your mask with your lining side up. This is a little tricky because we want to make sure that the ties are going to go on the outside of the mask. and we're gonna sew this around. So let me think about this.
Okay. I'll plug in just a second. Sorry for leaning in front of you. Okay, here's my mask. Maybe it's easier this way. My four corners are pinned. I'm going to unpin one corner and place my strap on the right side of my mask with the outside of it going to my outside edge. Okay. So I'm going to actually take this apart. This will be easier to see this way. So this is my lining. This is my right side. I'm going to pin it to my lining so that you can see it more easily. This is the right side of my lining. I am pinning to the right side. It's counterintuitive. I'm taking it to the corner. That's why I said, don't worry about the um, raw edge because we're gonna sew it into the mask. Which side of the seam of the straps goes up or down? You know, that's a, it, that's a good question. I think it's, it's not really as important as you think, but if you'd like to make the note and I'll show you what to do. Because I'm on my right side. I'm going to have this be the top of my mask and put an arrow there. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my stitched side down. Okay. So my arrow goes this way. My folds are all gonna be along the top edge and my stitch side is gonna be down. And I'm going to pin this just off the corner and I'm going to pin the next one just off the corner. And finally, my last one off the corner. Add a diagonal. I have the head of my pin inside. Now at this point you have two choices and I would recommend that you just hand stitch this in place. You can machine stitch it in place if you'd like to do that. So I have this spaghetti here, these four pieces, and that's why it's important to stitch. So I'm going to get out my needle. If you feel super comfortable on your machine, you can take it to your machine and just stitch across this corner right here. But it is important that you secure it. If you feel more comfortable with that piece on your Hand, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. So, threading my needle, I'll just back stitch this across, making my knot, pulling my knot, have my thread, and this is my inside, correct? And now I'm on my outside. So, I'm just going to back stitch this right here. Because again, this what it does is it reduces the bulk so that I am not sewing over that pin when I get into my machine stitching again. So I'm doing a very small back stitch right here. And then I'll also demo doing it by machine and you might like that better. It's really just a couple of stitches. There's my third one. And now I can tie a knot. The great advantage of this is I can get rid of that pin and then I have flexibility in my fabric again. So on the back side, I've just made a stitch, I'm going to make a knot. And this is my 
uh, lining layer. And because I'm going to stitch over that multiple times, I don't need to make double knot. Okay, I'm using this as a temporary place in place of a pin. So I'll do that one more time and then I'll do two of them by machine. Rolling the knot off my finger, pinching it, going to my next corner piece, poking it through from the back. Stitching it in place in a back stitch, you're only going to get about three stitches in. So there's my first one. Here's my second one going right to where I came out. And here's my third piece. Okay, and now I'll show you the machine stitching. This also secures your filter line to the lining, which is great because then you're treating it as one. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of this extra thread that I have. And now I'll sew my last two on machine. Let's go back over and take a look at that. Really keeping my edge, my working space tidy. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'll stitch diagonally across this with my sewing machine and I'll have all four pieces secured. Again, I'm putting my on my post. I'm going to go down, up, down. My take up lever is in the full upright position. There we go. My bobbin is still in place. And then I'll thread front to back. It may be easier for you if you put your presser foot down, you have a little more room back here. Here we go. What I love about this project is we're doing something for ourselves in this time of pandemic that will keep us safe. And we're doing it together. So, you know, there's something comforting in actually doing a sewing project together. Yeah, forgot the light doesn't go on. Okay, so I'm just going to start stitching here and sew across at a diagonal. Stitch here, so across at a diagonal. So I'm going to put my point under my foot this way. Okay. And I'll stitch, back stitch. And remember, if my needle is placed completely perpendicular to my, if my pin is placed perpendicular to my needle, the machine will jump over it. So here's my machine stitching. And here's my hand stitching. So very similar. It, they're both going to work just fine. And I'll get my second one. And then we're ready to put this thing together. Very, very exciting. Again, we're going to stitch this. We will back stitch. And my take up levers in the full upright position, pull my fabric apart, snip close to my garment, my mask, and then I'm ready to remove my pins. And I have my strap secured, my tie is secured. Let's go back and see how we put this together. I have a trick that is not discussed in the, uh, in the New York Times article that I have found is helpful. So these things have to stay inside while we're sewing. So I find it necessary to pin them in place. Okay, because I'm gonna sew 
all the way around the outside edge and I don't want that to get bollocked up at all. So you wanna get these all in the center. I'm gonna try and do it with as few pins as possible too so I don't have extra bulk, but okay. Because if you let these hang off, you won't have them on the other side. Make sure everything's really flat. The great thing about hand stitching is it keeps it really flat. So now I'm gonna fold all these to the center. You can rubber band them, you can paper clip them. I'll just straight pin them. Because then I'm gonna put the right side of my mask I'm going to see which way do I want up that my flowers grow both ways on top of that whole kit and caboodle. Right? So there's my straps. My straps are inside pinned here. And then I'm going to pin all the way around with my pins going out of perpendicular to the edge. I'm going to leave a two inch opening at the top. So somewhere in the middle, I'm leaving two inches. This will be my start point. I'm gonna stitch around all three sides and I'm gonna end right here. So let me pin and I'll show you the pinning pattern. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'll pin on the back side so that you can actually see the pins more readily. I'm making sure that my fabric is matching up on both sides. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of basting pins just to get it to make it flat so I can turn it over. And I want to see, make sure that these edges are even. Okay, so don't worry about that little bump from your straps, it really doesn't matter. Now you can see I'm gonna leave my top open two inches and pin. Really quick, so you go, what's the order of fabric again? Okay, so I have put my lining and my filter together and I stitched my, I stitched my strap to my lining. Okay, so does it go filter lining material? So it goes filter lining, and then your fabric face goes to the face of your lining. Okay. I'll, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I will review this before I stitch it, okay? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna pin so that you can see that. So I'm pinning, as you can see, perpendicular to the edge of my fabric because I'm gonna stitch at a quarter of an inch. And remember a quarter of an inch is the width of the presser foot. Keeping my heads of my pins to the inside. So now I'm gonna unroll this so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Wrong side of my mask, wrong side of my lining with the filter on top. Here's the wrong side of the mask, here's the filter on top. And on the inside, it looks like this. I have the right side of my mask, I have my straps pinned to my lining, which are also, at, and they're also sewn to the lining and the filter. Okay, is that making sense for everybody? Now I'm gonna fold this back down and pin this together. And this, there will be a little magic trip that's gonna happen in a second. 
So I'm noticing that my edges are slightly uneven and I'll wanna make sure that I'm sewing to the smallest, to the shortest edge and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, there we have it. I'm gonna draw my stitching line on here for you. And you'll want to cut across the corner. You don't have to draw the stitching line. Also, if you feel like this is hard to manage, you can do this first part with basting. And I think that's a great idea. But drawing the line on is also helpful if you need that. Any tool that you need to use and is effective is a good tool. And if you have a question about that, just ask me and I'll help you out. Okay. But we leave an opening, right? Yep. Okay. So I've marked my stitching line starting at my opening, going to the corner, going diagonally across the corner, continuing down the edge, diagonally across the corner, around the outside, up the short side, and then to the center where I have left my opening, at least a two inch opening. You don't have to measure it. Mine is two and a quarter, okay? Because the next step, and I'm gonna show you this. We don't have a lot of time left. I'm gonna show you. If you get your piece to this point, I will demo this again on Monday and we'll be able to stitch around it because I'm gonna show you how that works right now. Oops. And at the very end, I'm gonna show you how to backstitch that um, and stitch that one, the tie, if you prefer to do it by hand. You know, if you're, if you're watching a movie and you wanna do something soothing, you can certainly do that. So my machine is on. I'm going to start at my opening, stitch across. And remember, this is when we pivoted at the very first day. We pivot, go across, and then stitch, okay? Just watch. We'll do it together as a group. There's no rush. And again, I can use my presser foot here as my quarter inch seam marking, okay? I will backstitch. When I get to that point, I'm going to pivot, stitch across the corner. I'll just back stitch because I don't want my ties to come out. They won't. I've already stitched them on once. Pivot. stitch across the corner, I can feel my tie in there. Plus I can see that I have it stitched in place. So that works really well. Now I'm stitching on my marking that I made, which is also aligned with my presser foot. So you can see that I am stitching on my marking here. No, you can't really see. Well, how can I show you? 
coming up to my final corner, stitching across that at a diagonal, pivoting to stitch my last few inches. And I'm going to back stitch here because I'm leaving an opening. Pull that out and clip close to my fabric. Now I have stitched all the way around. And I can remove my pins. This is going to be something that's uh, the magic trick. It's really cool and easy. But it's why I wanted you to pin your ties up. To make this corner crisp, we're going to we're going to clip that tie off. We're going to grade the corner edges, right? So you can see it's graded. This is slightly shorter. Garment side is shorter than that side. That's just because I'm cutting the tie off. Okay, making sure you're not cutting through your fabric. Your stitching line, I mean, sorry. Okay, so I've cut all my diagonals. I have a thread I need to trim here from my beginning. Yep. Trimming that. And then I can pull this inside out through my little hole, keeping my lining and my garment face together. And I will pull it out and I can actually use the tie to pull the corner. Okay, so I'm going to turn it inside out. It looks like a weird, you know, bunch of spaghetti right now, but it really comes out very quickly. When I get actually to the corner, I can pull on that corner tie. I'm going to pull this whole knot of my, stri my straps out, undo them, pull them, and that helps me pull these corners. So you can see now I have actually a great piece turned right side out with my ties on my corners. So the next thing I'm going to do is iron this. Iron my edges flat and stitch this little hole closed. Okay, and that's so if you can get your your um, ties hand stitched in or and then uh, or machine stitched in and have it ready to stitch. I have done uh, made all my ties so that the bottom is the stitched part and the top part is the fold, but that's not necessary. Then I'm going to iron this very, very flat and top stitch this. Questions? Feels like a magic trick, doesn't it? To make that work. So uh, I'm gonna go to my iron and iron this flat. I'll iron on the white side so you can see if the black is, is peeking out and I'm going to make it really flat. And this strap is helping me because I don't want to have a big fold here. I want that to be really flat. In other words, I don't want this to be folded like this, right? I want it to be to have the, the seam be my edge. The seam is my edge. Okay. 
And you don't want to iron this too hot because your filter has a melting, lower melting point than your cotton. So be, just be cautious about this. Okay. Now I'm completely flat on both sides. I'm going to do a quick edge stitching along here all the way around so that you can see that. And I'll take you through this one more time on Monday. So now I'm going to line up my edge stitching and this is we had good practice on our ties to do this. So uh, let's see, that's my top. I'll start on the short side because I'm going to hide that in a pleat in a minute. That'll be our next lesson. Okay. must have run out of bobbin. So I'll wind a bobbin. But you can see I'm edge stitching very, very close to the edge. And that's what's going to help control when we put our pleats in. And that's going to make our mask. And do you do that on all four sides? Will that close the opening that you? Yeah. Absolutely. Very, very right point. You can hand stitch it first if you have any questions about that, but you can, if you edge stitch it, you will close that opening. So I'm gonna wind a bobbin, it'll be the last thing, and then I'll show you the hand stitch for that one thing, just to, if anybody wants to do it. This one happens to wind backwards. There happens to be an arrow up here. You have to release the clutch so that you're not gonna have your needle bar going up and down put this thread through. I think we've determined that almost everybody does this a similar way. Lock it in place, loosen the clutch, hold on to my thread. Now that it's engaged, my needle bar is not going up and down. And then my thread will just break because of the twist, okay? And I'm not gonna overfill. So that's probably enough for now. And then I re-secure my clutch. I can re-thread my machine. Front to back. Disengage that, that piece. Put my, drop my bobbin into my case. Make sure it spools clockwise. Put it through this little slot and then up through the spring. Whatever kind of spring you have, you've got something that'll work. Click it in place. Grab my bobbin thread and put it up. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I can resume stitching all the way around. And before I do that, I'm just gonna show you my back stitch quickly. Should you like a nice relaxing uh, I think I'll put this little bib on so you can see against white. So if you want a nice relaxing hand stitch, I have my needle and my thread. Put a knot in. Have my knot secure, hide it in my fold. I'm gonna have my fold be up. So here's my two fold piece. I'm gonna hide it in my, hide that knot in my fold. 
just about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then I will stitch through and back. And I will have my back stitch so that on the front side, it looks like a sewing machine. I meet my stitch and then I come beyond where my thread is sticking out, put it to where my stitch is meeting, put it to beyond where my thread is sticking out. So remember, it looks like this. And then I pull it through. I go to my stitch and pull it through. So on the back side, it has a slightly overlapping pattern. And on the front side, it looks like a sewing machine stitch. Okay. That one was kind of high up because I'm trying to demo it at the same time. Let me do two or three stitches evenly. So I go directly to my, where I came out of my stitch and go back to that. So not at all mandatory. That's my overlapping portion. But when you check your back stitch, then on the front side, it looks like a sewing machine. There's my better stitches. I'll try and get rid of this stitch by putting it inside my mask. <laughs> okay, questions. And uh, this is just for people who do not have a sewing machine. It's easy to do this by this mask by hand. So these take a while to do your, your ties, but it's actually really relaxing. So it's very exciting how fast it comes together, isn't it? For Monday, please have your ties complete, stitched. Have your, I'll get my other mask. Have your mask and filter ready to go. And then, so you're ready to go. And then pin your ties to your lining so that we're pinning them in that X pattern to the lining. And don't sew. And I'll take a look at everybody to make sure that we're all sewing it in the right place so that it, nobody ends up with the, with the strings not being able to extend <laughs> out. Nothing's more frustrating than suddenly having them go some they're tucked inside and then you have to undo things. So we're gonna just get it to the pinned point so that all your ties are pinned inside and your mask is pinned together or leave it so that like I showed you, you can show me how your mask works this way so that I can see it. Okay, questions? Okay, have a great weekend. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye Pam. Enjoy. You too. Bye, Pam. Bye-bye.